based on your experience as a uh, uh, science teacher in the state of Kansas, uh, what would you, what are the takeaways? What are the things that you would do more of or less of? The thing that bothers me the most is that we don't have any foresight. We don't think ahead at all. We don't mind building a uh, 5,000 square foot home for three people. We don't understand that the planet is finite. Population growth is not finite. This is the type of thing that really bothers me. We're too stupid. We don't, we don't take into consideration what we're leading into for the future. That really bothers me. Just like this family with 18 kids today on the TV. I don't know why they give them TV time. There was a professor at that university in Salina who dedicated his book to his one too many children. Uh, he had his third child. Uh, we just don't seem to be able to get it through our heads. We're going to start gobbling up gas again now that the price is down. And the price is going to go back up again. When are we going to learn? So if we brought that, you know, I have a, a tagline on uh, uh, one of on most of my email messages and on the uh, Plurk uh, social networking or mini blogging that says think globally, interact regionally, but learn locally. So if you wanted to bring your concerns down to a local learning activity that could engage or involve the next generation, uh, what are some some pragmatic ideas that you might have that would uh, would head us in that direction? Well, you've hit me cold, but one of the things I've always wanted to do, and I think in, in the long run it would work, and I think I could do it if I wasn't so incapacitated now, is to teach on a volunteer basis in a prison to help those guys who are they're going to get out mm -hmm. and they're going to start having more kids and more kids and more kids. They've got a lot to learn before they get out of that prison. I would love to do that, but I don't think I can. I don't think I'm physically able. What do you see as the uh, issues, barriers, or challenges that uh, we might uh, jointly overcome? Because my, my profession is hassle elimination. So if you had wishes in terms of how to pull that off, uh, and let's assume that we could take away the requirement that uh, all teaching needs to be done same time, same place. Some of it does, but not all of it. Oh, dear. I don't know. I, I'm terribly, terribly concerned about numbers of kids. And here I live in a house with my daughter who's got five kids. Uh, so your specialty was human oh, science? Yes. Yeah. And human tell me biology. a little bit. Okay, tell me a little bit more about the, uh, the the way that you got into human biology and and the the, the areas that you uh, that you found most interesting or challenging. The areas that I found most interesting and challenging were the kids who came from nothing, who were fighting hard to keep their head above water in school. Now this was in the Wichita school district, yeah. east or west Wichita or south. Okay, <laughs> Wichita High School South. Uh, it's amazing how many of those kids would come to school in the morning and you know they had no guidance at home at all. Uh, they don't know where they came from. They know nothing about themselves. Just like these guys in prison. They have no idea what they're all about. And they follow basic instincts when they get out. And you can't do that. Not in a, a civilized society. Uh, I have tremendous empathy for particularly male teenagers who are walking down the road <laughs> in the wrong direction. I don't care about teaching a third year chemistry class. I care about teaching a first year basic skills science class. And what Those age, are the kids I'm interested in. What age range was that typically? Was that right out of middle school or yeah. so like ninth grade well ninth grade is in the high school okay in Wichita. 
So yeah, ninth and tenth grade. Can you recall any uh, 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 students that tended to, to, to have a quick grasp of the, uh, the the message you were trying to get across? Oh, many, many. They uh, they would flock around and they'd want to go places. I had students in the fall of 1970 want to know if they could take a field trip next summer. And I said, well, sure, where do you want to go? And they said, well, give us a few days to think about it. They came back and I said, well, what did you decide? Do you want to go to Colorado? you want to go to western Kansas? No, we want to go to Africa. I said, do you want to go where? We want to go to Africa. And we did. The summer of 71, I took nine of those kids to East Africa. It was a lot of work. But you can see kids grow up so fast. And if I had my druthers, and I was named the Secretary of Education in Washington, D.C., I would insist that part of the graduation requirements from an American high school would be one semester in a third world nation. That's an interesting idea. Tell me more about... I would love it. I've seen kids grow up so fast in other cultures. You get them to, got them to Nairobi, for example, and they were so excited. They want to go see the lions, and they want to go see the giraffes, and they want to go, and it was very exciting. And after about three weeks, we were there for nine weeks. After about three weeks, let's go downtown and see John. Let's go downtown and see Matthew. They, they put human life, human beings, on a higher plateau on their priority system and drop the animals down. Total reversal of what they went there for to start with. I mm -hmm. didn't say anything to them about it, but I watched it. And it was quite marvelous to see how concerned they got about other people, mostly who were less fortunate than themselves. Mm -hmm. So it was really a pretty amazing mind shift in a relatively oh, short period of time. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And I've done the same thing many times in many summers, having kids all over the world. And we fly those airplanes over. These guys are flying these big planes to get flight time. Why not put 100 kids on the plane and take them someplace? Was that something you worked out with McConnell Air Force Base? or? No, I didn't work anything out. Okay. I just, it's just in the back of my head. Okay. No, I, it would okay. have to be done through Washington, I'm sure. It'd have to be. Because it would be the federal government that was flying them. But they'd have to spend one semester in a third world nation. Not Paris or London. Nairobi, Entebbe, any third world nation. Now that required probably cutting a whole lot of red tape with passports and all oh, kinds of, of other... Of course. Uh, of course. Okay. But, but that it, doesn't make it insurmountable. No, you're right. It, uh, just a, a matter of having a, 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 a strong enough will and maybe it's a combination of patience, persistence, sure. and prayer. They'll grow four or five years in four or five weeks Okay. in emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. And it was a marvelous thing for me to watch. Okay. Marvelous. Uh, I've had some conversations with uh, uh, a uh, peer mentor in Colorado that uh, has looked at a uh, process called confidence-based learning, uh, which is involves a process of unlearning those things that aren't necessarily so. You know, the half-truths and the implicit assumptions that we tend to, to, to carry around with us as extra baggage. Uh, do you think there was an element of that uh, getting rid of preconceived notions and, 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 and having a, 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 a clearing the mind bank, so to speak, to learn new, uh, Very new skills? No question about it at all. So I have a lady friend here I play bridge with. I played with her last Thursday morning. Uh, we go to the same bridge thing on Thursday mornings, and we played together Thursday. She was telling me they've got five kids, but they have two others. They're now in their early 30s that they got from Belgrade, Yugoslavia, 15 years ago, and one was 15 and one was 16. Mm -hmm. And I said, what was your biggest problem? And she said, they were raised in a communist nation. You steal if you want to eat. You lie if you have to, to get along, to live. She said, all of those basic values had to be changed, and it just, just warmed my heart something terrible. One's now a medical technologist, and one's a, a chemist of 